I invite you to rise in body or spirit for the reading of the gospel. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I'm giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. This Sunday's gospel reading picks up right where last Sunday's left off, and Jesus is still talking about what it means to abide in God, and that God abides in us and with us. God rests and stays and lives with us, and we rest and stay and live in God, particularly as we follow the commandments of Jesus, as we love one another just as he has loved us. As we love God with all that we have and all that we are and love our neighbor as ourself. And following this commandment, following this Jesus, is joy. It brings us and gifts us joy. Joy when we abide in Christ, when we're listening and following his call and in his footsteps, we find this joy, this unspeakable, insurmountable joy because we live out what we are meant to be and do in the world. We say yes to the call of the Holy Spirit, even though we know what lies ahead, just as what lies ahead for Jesus Included suffering and opposition and a clinging to the ways of the world rather than the ways of God. Joy nonetheless. I think of the stories when uh, when Jesus and his followers are looked at really funny because they're partying and having a good time and eating and drinking and enjoying one another's company and some of the religious leaders come up kind of scratching their heads maybe or perhaps even a little indignant and they go, hey Jesus, how come your followers don't fast? Even John, you know, your buddy John, your cousin John, uh, who was baptizing people out in the wilderness. John's, John's followers, John's disciples, they fasted. They were pious and somber and, or pious in a somber sort of way. Why, why don't your followers do the same? And Jesus says, the bridegroom is with them now, uh, so they ought to enjoy the wedding feast, right? In the presence of Christ, the appropriate response is rejoicing, just like when the woman finds the coin that's been lost, when the sheep has been brought back, that one with the other 99, when the sons return, part of the proper response of disciples turning toward God is rejoicing. Rejoicing because we have realized who we are and what we are meant to be and to do, that we are called by God, beloved. We are called by God to be love. Living out the commandment to love one another is, uh, is sometimes difficult, right? Because I think of all the things that like, I should do, right? And I don't always feel good about the things that I like, should do, especially when I'm not doing them. 
All these things that I have to do, that I should do. And I, I kind of talk about this in this way. I have a friend that says, uh, you know, part of our growth in Christian life is that we have to remember that we should stop shoulding all over ourselves. If we are constantly and only thinking about what we should do, rather than who and what we are, and the gifts that we have received, and the joy that comes when we share those gifts as they are meant to be shared, it can suck the joy right out of us. I think of a time, uh, I guess like six years ago now, um, that, uh, or getting close to that, that Lee and I were, were visiting the Holy Land. Um, and on a pilgrimage, and we were in uh, the small shop in Jerusalem that somehow like 60 of us had packed in, and uh, the shopkeeper was a friend of my Old Testament professor and our tour guide, and he pulled out all these stools around the edge, and part of his conversation was talking about, you know, hey, you as Christians tend to look at these commandments as all the things that you should and have to do, and they press in on you. And it's so hard. He goes, we tend to look at them as the things we get to do for a God who loves us so much and created us. In fact, we often try and do a little bit more than what the commandments ask of us to show how much we love God because we are so grateful for what God has done. And to me, I was like, this is the message of grace, right? And the relationship of grace and works. It's that we have received the grace of God first. That these good works naturally flow forth from us. And I think of the times that we are loved to such a degree that we realize it's not that we have to get up early to make breakfast for our family that we love, but we get to. We get to. And when I'm in that spot and not in my grumbling spot of, oh, I should have already been out of bed making the coffee in the morning. When I'm in that spot, there is joy and the joy flows through me into others around me. And my friends, the same is true of you. Your joy is contagious when you live it and share it. When we do what God has called us to do, when we live into our true identity as a beloved child of God, we enter into the same joy of Jesus, the joy that has existed since before creation, the joy that lasts throughout each and everything. That same joy is in us, and it comes to its completion when it is shared. Joy is heightened when more are included, especially when diversity is extended, right? The Holy Spirit's poured out on the Gentiles too. And the, the, the circumcised Jewish Christians with Peter can't believe that the Holy Spirit is for them too. But that was part of God's promise all along. That through God's people, all nations would be included in the grace and love and joy of God. As more are gathered, as more are included... As we are gathered together in all of our wonderful diversity, the joy increases. The joy becomes more complete as we share it. Therefore, as we go joyfully along our way, living the Jesus way, we share our joy. We share the love poured out into us. We shine with the light of Christ, and we invite others along the way, especially those who aren't just like us. If we're honest, it's really only like me that's just like me. Anyway, God's joy is contagious. It flows freely from one to the next. It is not dismissive of pain and suffering, but is present even in their midst, like laughter at a funeral. Joy unending, joy that grows as it is shared. So we go out with joy and are led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills break forth into singing like the psalmist cries in Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song. The waters do it. Instruments do it. The hills themselves sing out. So let's do just that, Spirit in the hills. Let the joy of the Lord guide us all along the way as we go. And let us join with the hills themselves in singing the praises of our risen Lord, showing and sharing the love of God that mends the body, mind, and soul, that forgives the last, the lost, and least, and brings life abundant and everlasting for you, for me, and for the whole world.